get it out of my head. In this video series, we've looked at how you can download, register, install, connect your devices, and quickly create a track inside of Cubase. There's one critical component we yet to cover, and that is how you get your music from here out there into the big wide world. Before we do that, we need to take care of a few things, and that's the mix stage of this whole entire process. So in this video, we're gonna look at levels, effects, some techniques that we can use to get our music sounding right, and we're also gonna look at formats that we need to render into to actually get our music out so that our friends and our family and the people we need to hear our music can access it in the correct format. Let's go and have a look. The art of mixing is really the art of controlling the audio and the music inside of your track. I'm making sure all of my audio events are nice and tidy and we did this in the how to record a great vocal track video. The next thing I'm going to do is control the master output in Cubase. I've put a limiter over the master out left and right section. I can specify an output level to make sure it doesn't go over that level. And I can move the input up and now you can start to see that limiter just working away there gently on top. The more you limit a track, the more you'll actually hear the limiter squashing the track down. So it very much depends on the type of music you're recording. A more subtle way of adding dynamics or controlling the level is to add a channel strip preset, which will add a compressor into the channel strip. Notice that as I added the compressor, it pushed my output level up into that red zone again. So it's important to remember that whatever you do during the mix process will quite often be adding volume. And that's one of the things we want to try to avoid. Adding volume makes things sound like they're better but in fact, they're just sounding louder. When I loaded the channel strip preset before, it also loaded an EQ, and there are three really good output presets here that are a good starting point for you to put over the top of your master output section. When we recorded the vocals on this track, we recorded and layered a lot of them. So we've doubled the main vocal and we've doubled a whole lot of the harmonies. So another really important thing to do before you mix down is make sure that you've tidied up your track. I've added a folder track and all I need to do now is just drag all of my lead vocals up into that folder track and I can give that folder track a color and a name. Having lots of tracks inside a folder track will mean that you can edit the actual folder track itself using the handles and everything inside will follow the edit. So it's a really neat thing to be able to do for say layered vocals or guitar tracks. I've added all of my instruments quickly into a folder track and this is what it looks like. It's a big difference on how it looked before. Let's move across to the mix console and those folders are all neatly tucked away there on the left hand side in order. I just click on a triangle to open them. Now without going and searching for anything in the mixer, I can select specific files over in that track list on the left hand side. Selecting them in the track list will highlight them in the mixer and I can right mouse click to get a contextual menu and select add group track to selected channels. I'm giving it a name and now a new group track has appeared over on the right hand side with a blue fader. I said that mixing is about control and group tracks are a fantastic way of being able to control lots of channels using a limited fader count. So I'm doing this for every different instrument group I have. Now the lead vocals, the backing vocals, the guitars, the synth and drums are all routed into these eight group channels and I can start to balance the sound. Of course, the lead vocals are the most important thing, so I'm bringing everything else down. Now, say I wanted to bring all channels down to give myself more headroom in the vocals, I can highlight, select quick link from the menu at the top, and just drop everything back. The lead vocals are important, but drums and low end provide us with energy. Being able to combine mixing with the project window is excellent because we can get a sense of what's going on in terms of the arrangement in our project. I want to add some atmosphere over these vocals, so I'm selecting them all and now I'm right mouse clicking and saying add effects to selected channels. The first thing I'm going to do to treat these vocals is add a reverb, which will give them a sense of space. Cubase comes with Roomworks SE, so I'm loading that in. Loading it in in this manner will create a new channel over on the right hand side and there's that new purple channel. Now I can select a preset, I can change the parameters and I can also change the amount that I'm sending from any channel to this new effects send that we've created. 
So basically, we've created a specific channel for this reverb and we can control how much level we're sending over to it. We could also put effects over the top of the new track that we've created. I'm going back to my lead vocal now to repeat the process. So selecting the track and adding a new effect track to the selected track. This time, I'm going to add a delay and Cubase comes with a delay. So let's select that and load it in. Now, the thing about reverbs and delays is if you use too much of them over the top of a lead vocal, it can really detract from what the singer's actually singing and saying. So we really wanna be able to control the effect that we're using. And once again, mixing is all about control. So that's cool, but it's just a bit much. So what I'm going to do is turn on the automation, the read and write. Now I go back to the start and hit play, and I'm just gonna ride this fader and bring the delay up and down. Can't get it out of my head. Time just so still. Now I'm waiting and I don't feel. So I'm bringing the fader up when the vocals aren't in. And now I can use my pencil to get even greater control over the automation that I've just recorded. You can copy and paste automation, so what I do for this chorus might work for another chorus. So it's really easy to not have to do that again. It's also helpful to remember that a lot of the instruments we're using have their own parameters and their own built-in effects section. So we can use them to further shape the sound. Hellion Sonic SE3 comes with a really powerful effects component. And we can send signals from our 16 tracks over to different effects tracks and add even more effects. Sometimes the best form of mixing though is just to take stuff out. I've got this guitar riff here. Which I really like, but I really don't think I need the guitar part before it. So I'm just grabbing my range tool and I'm deleting it and just putting a little fade in there to make sure it's a clean edit. Once you feel like you've got control of your mix, it's time to export it and check it in different environments. Use your left and right locator up the top to set areas for starting and ending the export, then go up to File, Export, and now we're going to Audio Mixdown. I always give my track a name with a number so I can see which mix version it is. Then it's a matter of choosing the folder and of course choosing the file format. So Cubase allows you to export in a number of different file formats and which format you choose will very much depend on the application for the actual recording itself. I'm setting my sample and bit rate to industry standard, which is basically what you'd use for a CD. If you want, you can open these files in WaveLab or upload them instantly to SoundCloud to start sharing with other people. And now you're done. You're ready to export your track and start sharing it with other people. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out in this video series with me. There's stacks of videos all around me on how you can be creative with Cubase. So please subscribe to our channels, like our videos and stop by and tell us how you're being creative and making music with Cubase. I'll catch you again soon. Holding on to me.